Let's try to solve this problem here. So if a stationary bus of mass 2500 kg starts to accelerate with a constant acceleration of 1.5 meter per second square. So you have a stationary bus, let's draw it out. A stationary bus uh, it should be on the ground. Okay, so we have a bus. The bus initial the bus has mass of 2500 kg. It's initially at rest because it mentions the word stationary so at rest so zero meter per second initially and then after that it undergoes a constant acceleration of 1.5 meter per second so acceleration is equals to 1.5 meter per second squared okay so now they ask you to neglect air resistance well we usually just neglect air resistance determine the average power produced by the bus engine if the bus reaches a speed of 12 meter per second in 8 seconds. So let's say if the, uh, the bus here, uh, due to this acceleration, will start to speed up, right? So let's say it undergoes a certain journey, then at the end of the, at the, end of the 8th second, the bus here reaches a certain point, okay? This is at second, at second later. Okay, then you can see that this of this bus here has a speed of 12 meter per second. Okay, now they ask what is the average power produced by the bus engine? Well, if the bus right want to accelerate, how do you accelerate? How do you speed up a bus? Well, you step on the accelerator pedal, right? The pedal on the right. If you are driving a car, the pedal on the right is the accelerator pedal, or we call it the gas pedal. So if you step on the gas pedal, then it will cause the bus to speed up so why does the car why does the bus speed up is because you when you step on the gas pedal you are burning your fuel to cause the engine to run thus providing a thrust to push the bus in the direction of motion okay so when the force is exerted by the engine on the engine of the bus on the bus Okay, it sounds a bit weird, it's like you exert the force on yourself, but if you have to treat the engine of the bus as a separate body to the bus. So it's the, the force is exerted by the engine of the bus towards the bus, by the engine of the bus, on the bus. Okay, so this force here is causing this acceleration of 1.5 meter per second square, and we are interested to find the average power produced by the bus engine. Well, to solve this problem, right, you just need to know uh this is average power right so average power p average is equal to the amount of work done uh, by the engine divided by the amount of time in which this engine is doing work okay but if you look at the free body diagram for this bus over here this free body diagram of course uh it has weight because this bus has mass and it has normal force because this bus is touching the surface but what causes it to move forward with an acceleration of 1.5 meter per second square it's due to the engine so this is the force by the engine okay so this is the force of the engine then this force of the engine is the one that caused the object to accelerate with 1.5 meter per second square so if you look at the situation over here the work total is equals to the work of uh work by work by the normal work by the weight work by gravity and the work done by the force of the engine so these are the three force that can do work on the bus right now but we know that the normal force and the weight are 90 degree to the displacement because the displacement right now is moving to in this direction so the normal force and the weight are both zero work done are both having zero work done because they are perpendicular to the displacement so now you can say your work total is equals to the work done by the force of the engine okay this part is usually missing in the explanation but it's important why because of this only we can relate it with the work engine theorem and by combining these two equations, we see that the work done by the force of the engine 
is equals to the change of kinetic energy. Okay, so uh, work done by the engine is the same as work done by the force of the engine. Yeah? Okay, so over here we can change it to the change of kinetic energy divided by the time taken for this change of kinetic energy to occur. Okay, it's not it's not immediately you can transform from work done by engine to the change of kinetic energy because change of kinetic energy is still equals to work done total. So to look at the total work done, make sure the total work done is only consists of the work done by the force of the engine. Then only you can say the work done by the force of the engine is equals to the change of the kinetic energy. So this is the part that is usually missing in the working. It doesn't cause any mark as well, but in terms of physics explanation, you, you, you still have to prove it because yeah, that makes the physics makes more sense. Okay. Uh, okay, so we continue. We know that the change of kinetic energy is just k final minus k initial. Let's speed things up a little, saying that this is mv final square minus m initial square divided by the time elapsed. Okay, we know that at the end, of, we know that this journey here will take 8 seconds. So our denominator here will be 8 seconds for our time interval. We know the initial speed, initial speed, the final speed, sorry, the final speed VF here should be 12 meter per second. And the initial speed should be 0 because the object starts from rest over here. So this will be 0 square. So if you do key in into your calculator, you'll find that the average power of produced by the bus engine will be 28. Okay, let's write out the whole thing. Or you can write as 2.8 times 10 to the power of 4. Okay, 2.81. Uh. Okay, because I'm a bit concerned about too many significant figures here. So 2.81 times 10 to the power of 4 watt. So this is the average power produced by the bus engine. Okay, next, they ask for the power of the bus engine at time t equals to 5 seconds. So they're asking for the power at some point in the middle. Okay, let's use another pen. Okay, so let's say some point in the middle where t is equals to 5 your bus will be somewhere around here. And at this point of time, the velocity is at a certain velocity. Okay, somewhere in between 0 meter per second and 12 meter per second. Okay, at t equals to 5, your speed will be somewhere in between 0 and 12 meter per second. And they ask for the power of the bus engine at this particular moment. Okay, so this is an instantaneous power case and is different from the average power. Average power is for a period of time, but for instantaneous power, a power at a specific moment. So if you want to determine the power at a specific moment, you have to modify your equation a bit. The power at t equals to 5 seconds. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just talk about the derivation a little bit. The power is, power, instantaneous power is the dW over dt. But you know that uh, if the force and the displacement are parallel, you can change it to force parallel times S dt. The force parallel, if it's constant, if the force is constant, uh, proven by this constant acceleration. Constant acceleration means by constant net force. So in this case, uh, the force exerted by the engine here, it's constant because it's a constant acceleration. So you can bring out the force parallel and you're left with ds over dt inside ds over dt is just the rate of change of uh, the position or displacement divided by time. So this is actually just the instantaneous velocity. Okay, so this is the formula that we'll be using in order to find the instantaneous power at time equals to 5 seconds. So we can write f engine times the velocity at that particular moment. Okay, so how do you find the force of the engine? Well, you have to use your sum of fx equals to max. You, you need to analyze the x dimension of the free body diagram using Newton's second law because the force is not balanced. So we know that this is 
what is happening in the x dimension is just the force of the engine and it will be equals to the mass and it will be equals to 1.5 meter per second square okay so uh, i probably shouldn't substitute it so early uh, let's just write it as the acceleration okay x then this one will be mass 2500 kg the acceleration of the bus is 1.5 Thus, you know the force exerted by the engine is 3750 newton. This is how you determine the force produced by the engine. Next, you look at the velocity at time equals to 5. You know the initial velocity, you know the acceleration, you are asked to find the final velocity when time is equal to 5. Well, this is just chapter 2 again. So, for chapter 2, let's do our SUVAT. Our displacement, we don't know. Our initial velocity is 0 meter per second. Our final velocity is what we are interested to know. Our acceleration is 1.5 meter per second squared. Our time is 5 seconds. So we have 3 information and we are interested with the final velocity. So you want the equation that has UVAT inside. And the equation should be v equals to u plus at. Uh, so let me continue my work over here. v equals to u plus at. Initially, the speed is 0 plus acceleration 1.5. The amount of time, 5.0 second. So you get 7.5 meter per second. And this is the speed when the time is equals to 5 seconds. After 5 seconds has passed, uh, the, the speed will be 7.5 meter per second. So now you bring this well, speed inside here, just substitute everything in, 3750 multiplied by 7.5 to represent the speed at time equals to 5. If you multiply this thing, these two things together, you should get an answer of 28125 watt. There made a mistake. Yes, I made a mistake. Sorry. Uh, the answer for the previous question over here, it's 225001. Or you can write it in another, in, in standard form, it should be 2.25. But the power at time equals to 5 is equal to 2.81 times 10 to the power of 4. Okay, I'm sorry for uh, putting in the wrong answer just now. Uh, but this is how you solve it. For average power, you look at how much work is being done. Then you divide by the time elapsed to do that work. For the instantaneous power, you have to determine the velocity at that particular moment and multiply it by the force that is parallel to the direction of motion. Okay, and that's how you do average power and instantaneous power.